All right, welcome back. It is 813 Whitechapel Memorial Park is holding a run in remembrance of September 11th, but they're also collecting items for care packages to ship to our troops. And here to talk about this event, it's like two events in one. We have Mr. David K. Crawl or David R. Crawl. He is the president of Whitechapel Memorial Park Cemetery. Thank you for being here and for hosting this event that you're doing as well. Well, thank you, Malcolm. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, we're, we're so excited for our second annual Patriots race this year. Uh, we're expecting a great turnout and uh, we're hoping uh, more people will sign up and uh, join us for the Patriots race. So for those who are unfamiliar, this is essentially two events in, in one. So, so let's talk about, first of all, the race. Okay. The race is on uh, Sunday, September 10th. It'll start at 9 a.m. Okay. Um, and we'll have the entire race course will be lined with large American flags and small American flags. So thousands of flags line the entire race course. It'll weave around all of our different war memorials inside the cemetery, our World War I polar bear memorial, our World War II uh, Four Freedoms Memorial, where 322 soldiers and sailors who wow. were killed in action in World War II are laid to rest there, our uh, Korean and Vietnam War Memorial, our Persian Gulf, our POW MIA, and the start and finish line will be right by our new War on Terror uh, memorial. How long has the run been taking place? This is our second year. Okay, so you were here last year talking about this. This is the second year. What was the turnout like? Oh, fantastic. We had over 350 people participate. We're on pace to have the same amount or more this year. Okay, so you have the run, but then you're also doing something that is, is phenomenal for our troops overseas. You have a care package drive. Talk about that. Yes, this is our 10th year doing that. Um, we're, we're, we teamed up again once again with the Michigan Military Moms and okay. we got them, they uh, got a list from them of what items our troops need overseas. And who better uh, than ask the moms? Right, mom, right? she, she <laughs> sent packages herself. So, yeah. you know, we have items like footballs and baseballs and, and Sudokus and crosswood puzzles and pens that we're asking people to bring, socks, hard candy, no chocolate, it melts. And that's going to melt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, playing cards, uh, we have foot powder, mouthwash, soap. Uh, shampoo, nuts, you know, uh, beef jerky, they love beef jerky, hot cocoa mix, coffee, you know, energy bars, granola. Yeah, um, and these are things that the military does not supply, but they are things that make your, your, your time overseas a little more bearable. Right. Uh, you know, they have a little downtime over there and, you know, little comforts of home. So how can people learn more them. about the efforts that you guys uh, have taken place? Well, if you go to uh, whitechapelcemetery.com, you can learn about our troop care package drive. If you want to sign up for the race, you can go to thepatriotsrace.com. It's thepatriotsrace.com. You know, registration is still open. We'll be taking registration uh, online till uh, Thursday night and then on site on Saturday from 12 to 5 and on Sunday from 7 to 8.30 in the morning. Mr. Crawl, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Appreciate Definitely it. appreciate it. Uh, we're going to send it over to Keenan. Keenan, what's uh, the weather going to be like later today? Uh, the weather is actually going to be uh, cool outside. We're cool outside, in fact, right now. But temps still in the 40s in lots of uh, lots of places. Sun's been up for over an hour, but in Howe, we're still at just 44 degrees. Right now, Lapeer, we're at 43. Ann Arbor's up to 47. Our warm spots, Mount Clemens, Troy City Airport, and Ypsilanti are just 51. And all of these temps are down 5, 10, 15 degrees colder than yesterday. Our winds are light and those light winds have allowed the, for the formation of some uh, scattered patches of fog to so allow for extra time in let's say Ann Arbor, one of our foggier spots and also in Port Huron. We've seen some fog as well. The radar is quiet right now. Even the satellite is quiet, but as we move to the uh, west here, you'll notice some scattered showers and even some thunder out over Lake Michigan making its way on shore on the west side of the state. By this afternoon, we'll have a chance for a few spotty showers and an isolated thunderstorm here as well. For the morning hours, I'm keeping us dry. Our hour by hour forecast taking us up through noontime now, and you'll notice that we all have uh, some scattered clouds outside, but there's no rain. The rain comes in during the afternoon. This is now three o'clock, so the kids are getting ready to uh, wrap up the day. Maybe they're wrapping up recess and spotty showers around and spotty showers around for the evening drive as well. We're looking for a high today, an unseasonably cool 66 degrees with partly sunny skies, a 50% chance of rain, 49 degrees tonight. Clouds diminish and uh, rain chances fall off only to rebound tomorrow with a 40% chance of showers and storms and a high of 65. Temperatures begin to climb Friday at 68. We're back in the 70s by Sunday. And as you're heading out this morning, finally some good news. That disabled truck has been moved out of the right lane 
on 23 southbound. So things are moving now, but you still want this alternate route. What a mess this has been. Hop off at Lee, take Whitmore Lake to 8 Mile to get around that. Now we're going to shift to 696 westbound because at Mound we do have a crash causing some real backups. So you're certainly going to want to leave yourself at least an extra 15 minutes if this is where your journey is taking you. Take a peek outside with me with your 7 first alert traffic camera. Here's an updated look at the northbound side of 275 at Grand River. They've moved everything out of the road. That's a good news, but it's still off to the left, so stay to the right. We want to keep you safe as you head to work and stay with us because still to come, making sense of life during troubled times. How a medium is using the memories of a loved one to help cope with stress. Stay with us. You're watching 7 Action News this morning on TV 20 Detroit. All right, finding meaning when life seems unexplainable. That's the focus of an upcoming workshop uh, in Macomb, whether it's the loss of a loved one, a breakup, the loss of a job. My guests are people who help others who may feel overwhelmed. I'm joined by psychic medium John uh, Thomas John and uh, spiritual healer and coach Belinda Phillips. Thank you both so much for uh, joining me uh, this morning. Uh, Thomas, exactly what is uh, psychic medium? What do you do and how do you help people cope with loss? Well, psychic is somebody who sees something about people's past, present, and future. And a medium is somebody who actually connects with somebody who's passed away that might have a message for you. So you can be one without the other? Yeah, you can be. Mm -hmm, yes, and some people are both. I, I, I do both. Um, but there are people that are just a medium or just a psychic, but I, I do both. All right. And Belinda, what is a spiritual healer? So I do, I work with, um, with a higher power, wh whether that's God or source, whatever anyone believes in, and also energy. So it's spiritual energy healing, and you, um, it brings in quantum physics as well as a belief in a higher how power can heal things. All right, and uh, how do you help people cope with loss? This is a question for both of you, but Belinda, since you're speaking, you can go ahead and start. Well, a lot of times when people have loss, uh, the first thing that they do is they're really hard on themselves. So because I do coaching work as well, I really teach them to honor whatever they're, they're feeling because what they're feeling is what they're feeling. 
but oftentimes people uh, misinterpret uh, the situations and make it something bad about themselves and it's an untrue belief and so they carry that with them it can be from loss or trauma anything like that and what I help them to do is uncover the, that root problem and then we can shift that using these methods and Thomas how do you help people cope with loss well I mean I when people do lose somebody especially if there's a death you know they may want to reach that person they may want to know how they can connect with that person they might want to know how they can get a you know are, are those people still watching over them or connected to them in some way and so you know, part of what the part I focus on in the workshop is teaching people different tools they can use to connect, whether it be uh, meditation or lurk, looking for certain signs or um, being open to certain things. That's kind of the way I work with people, and I, I teach them actual skills that they can use. All right. Now, uh, we don't have much time left, but they said that you wanted to uh, do uh, a reading. Is that? We can do that. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. We only have a uh, we have about 30 seconds left so I'm I sure will what comes to me for yes of course well what I what comes to me first is I do I do feel that you have a spirit guide that works with you um, we have spirit guides and loved ones that can work with us so you actually have a spirit guide that's very connected to you that helps you in a lot of areas in your life I feel that your spirit guide in particular actually is the same one that you're children have so 